you know, I always think of that scripture that cursed is man that trusts in man whose heart departs from the living God. And truly, when we trust in our flesh or the flesh of someone else, it's because our heart has departed from the living God. So let's turn to John 15. And let's, let's pray for this message too. Lord, we thank you, Father. And we ask you now to speak to us through your word, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. John 15. I'm going to read 1 through 11. And I think it gives us a true perspective on our relationship with the Lord, on our Christianity, because I think that the world in general, Christians in general, have this idea that salvation and our relationship with the Lord is about being forgiven. And then once we're forgiven, we go about, we live our life, and we live our lives and we do the things that we think are priority. We give God his time and uh, maybe even go to church and we honor him uh, in a sense that we will speak well of him and maybe even claim to be a Christian. But this is a scripture here that stands all of that on its head, that our relationship with the Lord is the life of Christ in me. It's Christ's life in me. It's my life. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not yet not I. It's Christ living in me. And the necessity of this, as Jesus has pointed out in John 15, and the interesting thing, the time that he's doing this, John 14 and 15, is written... And it's the account of when Jesus and the disciples left the upper room. And they're on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And I find it really interesting that he chose this time to share this with his disciples because it's the time they're really going to need this. Because this is going to be the most trying time of their, life, of their lives. And truly... The gospel will not be taken anywhere. That Christianity would have died at this time had it not been that the Holy Spirit brought these verses back to remembrance to the disciples. And we know now that the gospel has traveled all the way around the world. Jesus said in John 15, 1, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. And see, it's not just pointing out our relationship with Jesus Christ, but it is pointing out our relationship with God the Father in Christ. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me, and that's the most important phrase that we're going to find, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit." so shall ye be my disciples. And you see this is an issue of discipleship. He's speaking to believers, people who are believers already, already born again. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that your joy might remain in you, 
and that your joy might be full. It is an issue of discipleship and an issue of joy. So we see they leave the upper room. They're all walking on the way. And Jesus is instructing them. And I can just imagine him as we're walking along. They're walking along to the garden. That he breaks off a branch from the vine. And he begins to share these things. And his desire was to teach them of the most vital relationship with himself and with the Father. He gave this teaching at this time because this was what we would call the moment of truth. Or this was the time when they were going to have to learn how to walk. They had just been informed that Jesus is going away. But that his work was to continue. And it was to continue through them. And it is to continue through us. This passage is about becoming a genuine disciple. And about how to bear fruit. Now I wanted to point out a couple things. Is that this has been a passage of scripture that has been used to say, well, you can lose your salvation. He begins the, the verse 2 with saying, every branch that is in me. I'm talking about the branches that are in me. He's not talking about the other branches that are disconnected. He's talking about the branch, branches that are in me. And abide in me. He's also talking about the issue of their joy. If you do not abide in me, you're going to go through some difficult times and you will not live a joyful life. As I've always said, who is more miserable than a backslidden Christian? They are always miserable. Their conscience is never clean. They do not abide in the joy of the Lord as much as they surround themselves with things. But what is this personality of the true vine. What is the true vine true, truly like? Well, what he's re revealing some things here. Jesus alone possesses life within himself. Remember the first thing I said that our walk with the Lord is about the life of Christ in me. And that's what he's teaching here. That you only have one source of life as a branch. Branch only has one place to get its nutrition from. It can't do that on its own. It has to abide in the vine. Jesus and Jesus alone. He possesses life within himself. Another thing that we can know about here that we can learn from this scripture is that all other vines are counterfeit vines. He is the true vine. He says, I am the true vine. Why would he say that? Because there are a lot of other vines that are not the true vine. There's in, an interesting thing to notice about counterfeit vines. Something else that we may implant ourselves to. When I go to my job and I am planted there and that is my source of life. What does it do? It requires from me. You see, when I am in the true vine, the vine nourishes me. But if I am implanted in a relationship with another person, and that is my source, it's going to require and draw from me. We'll see that every other deeply interconnected vine that we can attach ourselves to will draw life and energy from us, except for the true vine. But that's because these are false vines. False vines can be many things. The Bible doesn't go into them, name them, but we know that our job, even our country or our sports team that we follow or our city or recreation, I can spend so much time in recreation that it becomes my very life, my hobbies, even my family or even my church. If I am not drawing my source of life, from the true vine, then even 
the organization of the church can become a false vine. Jesus says, I am the true vine. I'm the only genuine one. And my father is the vine dresser or the husbandman. God's the one that looks out and judges our work for him. Is this from my son or is this from the flesh? He's the husbandman. And when he sees that we are going to rely on the wrong thing, then he will do some pruning he is the vine grower he owns ba he, he owns the vineyard is what we can say and he's the one that opens and closes the doors to heaven and he says that the only way that you are reconciled to me is in my son or through my son and that's the key verse there in Christ in me Jesus said several times in this passage in me in Ephesians, Paul talks a lot about our spiritual blessings, that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. And it's a revelation from this very passage of Scripture, I'm sure, as Jesus speaks of being in him, in me. He's not talking about wheat and tares, but only those who are only wheat, those who are in Christ. He also tells us that we will go through trials and difficulties in our lives, but it's going to be these trials that strengthen us. And what he's saying to the disciples, he's saying, I am the vine, you're the branches. If you abide in me, you'll bear much fruit. And there are He's making it clear there are going to be trials in life, but if you stay attached to the vine, then you will bear much fruit. He's saying they are in me, but they'll be have but they will have problems, and if they bear no fruit, my father is going to be doing some pruning. The gardener's involved in everything that has to do with the vine. The, var, the gardener and the, uh, the vine, the gardener is the vine dresser, so he is intimately acquainted with the vine. And what does he do? He is there for protection. The gardener provides the tender watch and care and protection for the vineyard. God sees it all. Even the sparrow that falls... He knows about it. He knows us intimately, the number of hairs on our head. Proverbs 15.3 says, I praise the Lord for the sure knowledge that nothing passes the gaze of my heavenly Father. He doesn't miss anything. So when we say, hey, God, are you paying attention? Do you see what's happening to me? Believe me, he does know what's happening. He's also there for purifying and that's what the pruning process is all about he uses methods of purifying his vineyard he challenges the branch and he'll take the unfruitful branch and lift it from the dirt into which it's fallen and give it a better chance of being productive and that's the way God will reach into our lives he will put us in a place and if we respond with repentance will be fruitful in his vineyard. His chastisement is always proof of his love. And my relationship with him, who he loveth, he chasteneth. It's Romans 3, 19. So we know that Jesus teaches that he is the energy, the vine is the energy that produces fruit in our life. He simply says, I am the true vine. How did the disciples respond to this? And what's the example for us, how we respond? They listened to Jesus. They received his teaching. 
They opened their ears. They made professions of faith. How can we? We listen to the word of the Lord. We don't resent the word of the Lord. We don't disrespect the word of the Lord and the gospel. We open our ears and our eyes as Satan has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. And we say, Lord, help my unbelief. We make professions of faith. We are obedient in baptism. And then we begin to bear fruit. Jesus gives us his truth. I am the vine and you are the branches. And I thank the Lord that we live in a time when we don't suffer the persecution of being branches that we would have at one time. But that we can be branches of the vine and that we can bear that fruit that when we get to heaven that we will hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And with that, we can lay our crowns at his feet because we know it is because of the life of Christ in us that we bear this fruit. Let's stand. Lord, we thank you, Father, that you are the vine, we are the branches, and what this means to us, Lord, that our lives are not that we just go out there and live the best we can, but it is the life of Christ in us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.